Well, this part is where I ventilate the the hair individually to the web to the wig on the top. Of course, this is a little bit of a triangle that I'm putting hair. Normally, I wouldn't have to, to ventilate hair on this part. I would just put wefts, but I decided to take a little bit of extra effort and put this little triangle because this is where the hair spreads. So I want to be able to have better weft coverage because it just took me like like one one and a half hours to make so. This is the the other half now that I'm doing and I ventilate in two directions here one row is going downwards and one row is going um, to the left on this side because this is the left side and to the right side it goes to the right so I have mixed the direction because I want the hair to be able to spread and kind of you know fluff and mix and cover better also, this density here is 100%. I ventilate in every hole. In the lower part, I do double knots, sorry, double strands per knot, and then upwards, I do single. Now, this is, uh, I ventilate a little bit in the overlap. The back lace is BHT, and it's very thick and strong. And I did it because I want to put the wefts there. And this top is amazing hair store lace. And right here, I'm making a small triangular shape with hair ventilating going into multiple directions because this is also going to be where the hair spread apart. And now I ventilate normally going uh, sidewards. This is the left side if you were wearing the unit. And here I ventilate natural density. This is 66% um, of the lace ventilation which means that I ventilate in two holes and then I skip one hole and this is 66% of course as I said and this creates a, a rather natural um, density you can see the parting is a little bit visible so it's not too thick because this is for a person who she's going to lose her hair unfortunately and she's going to need a natural wig to be able to wear so this is not a cosplay wig. This is not a character wig. This is a natural wig. So yeah, I'm ventilating. I have a few inevitable seams here, as you can see. I don't like them. I'm going to make this seam a little bit flattened. There it is. You can see. I just flattened it down and stitched it into place and over the seams it's a little difficult to ventilate in a pattern because you have multiple layers of lace and you can't really see what you're doing or where you're, where you're doing this this is the back, it's very close up now it looks a little cracky here because it's too close anyway, I ventilate on the overlap and then I go to the seam that I have there, the fold. Now, I usually stitch my folds very nicely, very detailed. I don't put the just a temporary hold because people usually don't stitch them and then when they ventilate, they ventilate through all the layers and the hair is what keeps the seam from uh, unraveling. But in my case, because I do single strand, single knot, I don't think it's too secure to do it like that. So I really stitch the seam very securely with the uh, invisible nylon thread and then I just uh, ventilate on top single strand single knot and when I have multiple layers of uh, lace I usually don't even ventilate through all the layers I just ventilate through the top layer and that's it so from the inside of the unit you might not be viewing all the knots this is the last uh, section of the left side that is left on the top part of course and in the front, you can still see uh, the, the the front lace, which is Demir 20 from Bamboo and Postage. And I have a little bit of overlap, which is very clear and has two very distinctive uh, stitches. Now that you can see, because it's, it doesn't have any hair, of course, and it has the blue contrast. But it shouldn't be any visible at all, because it's just two layers. And the, the overlap is very narrow. It's not too big.
so it's all good and I'm going to be finishing this side eventually I'm ventilating really fast when it's clear clean lace no seams no folds no overlaps it's so easy for me and let me just tell you about my pattern there are wig makers that ventilate a freestyle knotting I can't really do that I mean I could do that but for me it would be too time consuming because my brain is processing everything so I'd rather have a pattern um, yeah I'm finishing the left side now I can just yeah this is the right side and as I was saying I ventilate two holes I leave one hole blank this way I don't have to think about it do does it look natural that is the is it this is it that did I leave any spot vacant? I don't have to think of all these things because I ventilate in a pattern. So if I follow the pattern, everything is going to be fine. For example, this is the right side right now. Is it going to be the same density to the left side? It's going to be mathematically identical to the left side because I ventilate exactly the same pattern. If you ventilate freestyle uh, on the top or in the body of the unit, you will always. I will always have to see is it okay did i fill all the areas is it too dense is it too this or too that this way i don't have to do that and you know what yeah you see my room is a little messy right now but anyway um i kind of i kind of envy other wig makers that don't really mind those things maybe this is why i'm the super wig maker and this is why my job is so delicate and so so detailed and everything i don't take pride in for what i do right now this is how i am so maybe this is why my job is being so detailed because I do give a shit about all the little details that other wig makers just don't care to think, they don't care to, to deal with. I'm filling this left area that I left previously because I forgot that. And I continue the right side. This is the, the seams that I hate so much. This is why I hate ventilating on top of seams. I hate it. And I also do single strand, single knot throughout the ventilated part. You will not see two strands in one hole or a double knot. You might see like a couple double knots here and there where I thought it was necessary, but 99% single strand, single knot. And the only double knot that I might have done can be above uh, seams or folds or anything that I really want to put a little bit of extra security but not too many strands, like I ventilate one double knot and then the rest around it is single. Then I ventilate another double knot somewhere else and everything around it is single knot. So this is the way that I do it. And you know what? Some people might think that I do plan too much, that I over plan the, the creation of the unit and it might bring too much labor in, in the unit but in the end if you plan everything if you know exactly what you're doing you're literally saving time this is why i save time for example this video is about uh, 18 minutes long for the ventilation only part and uh, sorry the ventilation and the the, the sewing of the wefts which means and it's 150 times faster so that means that the whole video will be 45 hours long all this procedure 45 hours is not a big time to make single strand single knot half a unit like if i if i spend it like 90 hours double to that i would be able to make a full lace unit with single strand single knot this is how fast i can be when i plan everything and when i have a pattern and a mathematical uh, way of ventilating hair so i'm finishing the right side as well i'm about to ventilate in the front line and the ear tabs i'm going to explain the ear tabs and the plastic thing that i have there in the detailed video but this is asian hair we bought this hair for the title for this hair was russian unprocessed raw virgin hair and we thought that for Russian it stands to European or you know Slavic hair, but Russia uh, expands all the way in Eastern Asia. So you know above China and stuff, and some Russians that live there, they are not Europeans. They are you know in the Asian race, or there's no Asian race actually. They used to go Mong Mongoloid race, but it's not politically correct. Anyway, 
When we contacted the seller, he said that this is Eastern Russia. Well, no, said Sherlock. I've reached the Daniel 20 level I'm ventilating at this point, and I wanted to cry. The knots wouldn't become tight enough. The lace would rip if I tried to fasten the knot, and I wanted to cry because I did all this job for nothing. And then you can see here that I have a little bucket of water, and I just found out that if you put the, wa the hair inside the water for like at least five minutes, it absorbs the water, it swells up, and it becomes more malleable. This is why you're not supposed to brush your hair when it's wet, because it's more malleable, it's more elastic, it's, it's less wiry, and it tangles easier, of course. So by letting the bundles in there, the hair became so malleable, it was like cream. You know, if you put too much water in your hair, and you just touch it, it feels like cream. This is an old scarf that I had, and I used it here for forget about it and this way the knots were not too tight because I didn't care so much here I just cared for the ventilation to occur I was going to heat seal the knots but with the, the wet hair the ventilation just went on smoothly it was slower than the top part where I had starter lace but it was fast enough like God, I was like, I was like, I found the solution. You need to wet the hair, and I might use this method even for um, stronger lace. It doesn't have to be Daniel 20 because the knots do get easier and smaller. Anyway, the ventilation went on uh, successfully. The density, uh, lace-wise, that I used in the front part because this is Daniel 20 and it's slightly uh, denser than the amazing hairstyle laser that I use for the top. It has more holes per square unit. And if I ventilate two holes and leave one hole blank, like I did in the top, then this would be, uh, this would have more density in the end. And this is the front. It's, it's not supposed to be denser than the top. So instead of that, I was ventilating three holes out of five. So three holes ventilation, two holes blank. And this way, instead of 66% less ventilation, I had 60%. So it's like 6% less. And overall, the density is just the same because this lace is a little denser. So I removed a little bit of lace density, but because the lace has more holes per square unit, the density eventually ended up being kind of identical. This is the other side. You might have noticed as well that I leave a little bit of uh, a front part where I don't ventilate the hair it's exactly five holes worth of lace and if you have seen my previous video about the the collecting thin strands from a bundle to put in the hairline I did this because as I said this is not Slavic hair like half of this hair is horse hair it's so thick and so difficult and okay I managed to do the whole unit correctly but in the very front fine hairline, there's no way I'm going to be putting coarse hair. So I decided to collect the thinnest strands that I could get from the bundle. And then I would be using them in the very fine front hairline. And this way I would have the, you know, the best, uh, the best view for the wig. You wouldn't be able to see the knots. Because there are some thin strands in there, but most of it is thick. And I do plan to bleach the knots, but uh, I have never bleached knots, so I will have to run some tests first before I ruin this unit. And if I can do that, I will send the unit like that, because if I heat seal the knots, you will not be able to see... I mean, from, from a normal distance, you wouldn't be able to see too much. Okay? It's, it's already high definition enough. On this part here, I'm ventilating in the neck area. This is the back area, and initially this was not into the plan. Uh, but I decided to go ahead and add, like, you know, I'm wasting about an hour or two ventilating in the back. Because if I put a weft here, it's going to be difficult for me first to conceal that. And I would eventually have to spend a little bit more time trying to make this lower weft look more presentable so instead of that i said you know what screw this i'm going to ventilate exactly five holes worth of lace all around the perimeter and this is going to give a little bit of a better 
visual effect in the finished unit i mean if the wind blows a little bit you wouldn't see a straight track in the end because this is a ventilated single strand single knot throughout the back and uh, i ventilated 100 percent density in the lace here i don't skip around i just put it like thick like this because i didn't care so much and i could put more hair but you know it would take even more time and too time consuming so yeah so now i'm putting the hairline you might not be able to tell but the hair that i'm using for this part is thinner overall thinner and also the density here goes from uh what it used to be like the 60 percent in the denier 20 lace to even like 30 percent in the very 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 front like the very front part has like one not every three holes and then it goes to a little denser and to the back density so I'm doing the right side here it all looks good it was so easy like I was watering these strands as well to make them more malleable but because it was very thin strands it was so easy to ventilate and make the knots tidy so I'm putting the back weft, then I realize that I have to put the lower weft first because it's easier. I pin it down and then I just stitch it so detailed. You can see that I put once, uh, one stitch every like 3-4 millimeters because I really want to make a very detailed job. I don't want to just stitch the weft in the back like in every inch, for example, like they usually do in the dome cap and the quick weave way that they do it because it would save me like an hour or two, but I don't care. I mean, you're making a unit, you have wasted so many hours making the unit. Please take the time and stitch the wefts in the back correctly and secure enough. This is the nylon thread that I'm using. This is why you can see it against the light. It's transparent because she plans to dye the hair eventually, but it's not going to be visible anyway. If you see the tracks back there, the stitches is the last thing you should care about. So. You can see that my hands move as if I'm uh, a sewing machine right now. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You can see clearly what I do. And when I, I was actually putting one weft every about one centimeter, you can see here, look at that. Like stitch after stitch. But when I went in the top part, I decided to put a little bit more dense because you know, whatever you put on top is going to hide everything in the bottom. So dense top is going to hide everything and i was using uh the the shorter wefts in the end this is the last weft that i'm putting and this is just a little bit i mean i'm going to show you a detailed finished result in the actual video this is just a demonstration it's not too layered in the back down you see how thick it is even in the ends because i was using the shorter see it's a little thicker in the base of course i was using shorter wefts in the lower part and longer than the top so I don't have too much layering this is a side parting you can part it anywhere you want but I just uh, parted it in the side for the demonstration because this is how this lady is uh, parting her own natural hair and look how beautiful this hair looks it does have a little bit of layering naturally you don't see any stray strands on top because the, the returns are long enough to be laid flat the hair is not pinned straight as well it looks good it could be i mean it could look like european hair from a distance but you know it's a little thick and the girl that needs it she's actually a very you know she's a danish so she's like a european and yeah this video has come to an end um, stay tuned for the other videos you can click in any of these links to see like in the middle for example it's the video where i talked to you about the collection of the thinner strands to be used for the hairline the first um, video here that i show you is um, about everything like how i was constructing the wig cap uh, i'm also talking about the hair and i'm going to explain to you all the wig construction and everything and then the last video in the third part that you see is the final results where i'm going to be taking the unit in um, you know maybe after i bleach the knot i don't know if i'm going to bleach them yet but you know it's going to be the finished result before i ship it to denmark to this lady and i'm going to take some photos and video shoots uh, out in the natural light indoors and everything